What made you decide to run for county recorder? I saw the need, mainly. Uh, I saw the urgency of it. I also know that I have all of the qualifications that are needed to do a better job than the current occupant of that office. So, for example, I saw that we were spending a fortune on legal fees, sometimes paying for both sides of legal disputes. I saw that we had someone in that office who wasn't transparent, um, and many people were frustrated that they weren't getting information that we were rightly entitled to, simple information for simple questions. And waste, I saw waste that, um, for example, 10 tons of ballot paper that's sitting in a warehouse that we can't use. Um, and that we'd never needed in the first place. And so I knew that I could do a better job um, managing that office. What changes are you hoping to implement if you're elected? Right. I want to do a better job with education. Um, I don't think that many people are aware of some of the programs that are offered by the state and the county to make elections more secure and make records more secure. So, for example, we have something called a fraud alert system when people go and record a deed. Um, someone else could swoop in and record something over that deed and make the ownership and um, identity of the owner uh, less sure. and. Um, to avoid fraud, we have something now called a fraud alert system where people can have their email or text um, or phone pinged when someone else comes and tries to record something with that information. We've had a problem in this county with empty lots that are owned by absentee owners. And also, we have something called ballot tracks, which tracks mail-in ballots, and that's something we should celebrate and use to make our mail-in system more secure and encourage people to use. And unfortunately, we haven't had the best outreach and education on those two things. I also intend to be someone who's more transparent uh, in the office and who will use more common sense to avoid avoidable lawsuits. Uh, mainly we need someone in there who's going to follow the law and not, not violate the law. <laughs> Unless it's unconstitutional, in which case all bets are off. You know, I would, uh, you know, I, you know, everybody takes an oath of office who takes that office to follow the law and follow the Constitution of Arizona and um, the Constitution of the United States. And we need someone in there who will take that seriously. Last year, after we chased out, we as in the county leadership, including the guy I'm running against now, chased out a very competent election director, Lisa Mara, um, who was, well, still is a very well-respected Republican and was doing a good job and she refused to violate the law. And so um, there were forces encouraging her to violate the law. And um, at that point, David Stevens, who I'm running against, stepped into that office and he mismanaged that office, the elections office in my opinion. There were several um, things that happened at that point that shouldn't have happened. And then he was given also by the Board of Supervisors full discretion, full authority to hire someone to take his place. And he hired a person who had lied on his application and had um, never stayed at a job very long and um, someone who didn't meet the qualifications for the office. And unfortunately, in addition to unilaterally hiring this person, David Stevens also paid him above the posted salary range and threw in moving expenses. Predictably, in my opinion, because all of these were red flags um, prior to his being hired, he 
this new hire left after just a few months on the job. And at that point, um, the Board of Supervisors um, decided that David Stevens um, was not, well, there had been a contract. I don't have to go into all the specifics, but the point is that David Stevens no longer has that power, but if the Board of Supervisors were to change its mind again, David Stevens would be back in that position um, overseeing the elections department. Now there are many things that the recorder does now that pertain to elections. So managing the voter rolls, making sure that people who are ineligible to vote are not voting. That's important. Also managing um, um, early ballots and mail-in ballots, provisional ballots, all of that is the recorder's regular duties in addition to all of the archiving that the recorder does and frankly that part of the job is a full half of the job at least um, when there aren't these conspiracy theories uh, happening created by the leadership uh, and spread by the leadership, um, the normal course of business is for the, the archiving of documents to take um, more time than all of these election matters that we've been bogged down with and having to pay to get sorted out. So if you were elected and then put in that position by the Board of Supervisors to higher elections director because we don't have one mm -hmm. um how would you go about that and what would you do well if that became my a part of my job um i would certainly hire someone who's competent i would get feedback from you know others if i saw red flags i would act on those red flags i would um do a better job i believe than the person who's doing that type of thing now. And you mentioned you saw certain needs which made you decide to run. What, yes. what were those needs that you, you saw? Okay. Uh, lack of transparency in the office. Uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of lawsuits. Sometimes we've had to pay for both sides of legal disputes and that's a problem. We've also had waste in office. Um, CNN underreported what was happening actually and they reported that there were five tons of ballot paper purchased and left in a warehouse that we can't use it's actually 10 tons of ballot paper and we never needed it in the first place because there's never been a problem with ballot paper um, i also my main thing is to keep partisan politics out of this office so everybody who works there myself included will leave their personal politics at the door and not bring it into this office because it, it's an administrative office it doesn't belong in the recorder's office we need someone there who's going to be fair and who's going to follow the law and why should people vote for you i have the qualifications the experience to do this job well I have always been interested in public service and um, participating in public service. I represented the elections office and the recorder's office years ago when I worked at, as a deputy county attorney for the Cochise County Attorney's Office. And I kept those offices out of trouble and I, I helped them follow the law. Before that, I was a teacher. Um, I've administered grants, I've started nonprofits and run them well. I've, um, uh, I was a waitress and so service is very important to me and um, good service. Just having someone who's gonna, who's gonna help us with our needs, which are a functional county government and um, making sure that our most important records are cared for and accurately maintained. Is there anything else you'd like to share um, that we didn't that I didn't ask you or uh, you weren't we didn't talk about? Well, I think all of us want a functional government, and we all want. None of us have the resources to pay for things we don't need, and 
none of us have the resources to pay for lawsuits, especially both sides of legal disputes that are currently costing Cochise County voters so much money. Um, so Cochise County residents, whether they vote or not, which is why it's incumbent on people who are eligible to vote to vote, to do something about what is, what is happening um, here because um, we can sit back and let things happen as they continue to happen and um, it will come out of our pockets. Perfect. Oh, one, one more thing, sorry. Yeah. It's really important to me to make sure that our elections workers and volunteers are safe. And unfortunately, when people spread conspiracy theories, uh, it makes everybody less safe. It makes everybody feel like there's a target on their back and their families have a target on their backs. And unfortunately, we can't afford that to sustain our democratic system. And so that's critical for anyone taking this role to pay attention to.